The cosine law comes in two forms. One version is used when you're looking to calculate a side length, and the same formula rearranged is used when you're looking to calculate an angle inside a triangle. You'll use this law when you don't have a 90 degree angle in a triangle. If you do have a 90 degree angle, you can use Pythagorean theorem or regular SOHCAHTOA, like sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos adjacent hypotenuse, stuff like that. In both the examples I have for you today, there's no 90 degree angle in these triangles. And so you can't use regular sine, cos, and tan. Therefore, you'll need some other laws. Sine law might work. Cosine law is what you use when you have either two sides and the angle in between them, or you have all three sides of the triangle. This first example that I have drawn for you is two sides and the angle that's in between them. If you take a look, I'm giving you the length of this side, I'm giving you the length of this side, and I'm giving you the angle that is made by those two side lengths. This is a case of cosine law. The way your teacher is giving you the formula is probably c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c, but those letters could be anything. And because I'm being asked for this side length, the one across from capital F, I'm solving for little f. It's generally uh, a notation thing that the side length across from an angle is the lowercase version of that angle. So if I'm solving for f squared, the only actual other requirement is that that angle is the same letter, but the capital letter because it's an angle. The other two letters, they're all lowercase here because that's all for the side lengths you were given, can appear in any order. The G could have gone here, D could have gone there, as long as you have one of each and one of each here as well. So the way I've written this, you'll see the C's are replaced with F's, the A's are D's, and the B's are G's. It's just how I did it there. You'll have to use whatever three letters you were given. If I'm solving for F squared, the length of D squared, well, low, little d is 12 squared. Little g is 8, which is also squared. I'm going to replace that d with 12 and that g with 8, just like I did earlier. And I have to multiply by the cosine of the angle that's in between them. Here it's 130 degrees. Now, I probably should have replaced f with x, since that's what I was given it as. Little f is called x, the unknown there. Now I'm going to do some stuff on my calculator. Now what I want you to do is to do each of the exponents first and do all of this multiplication together as well. Leave the addition and subtraction for the very end. That's order of operations. 12 squared is 144 plus 8 squared is 64 minus, and now on the calculator, I'm going to do 2 times 12 times 8 times cos 130. I get negative 123.42. And I just want to point out that I'm in degree mode on my calculator. If you're not in degree mode, it might say deg or it might say d, then you're going to get the wrong answer because we're using cosine in degrees here. You'll have to change it with like your mode button or whatever it is on your calculator. Yes, subtracting a negative will make the number even larger. 144 plus 64 minus negative 123.42 gives me a total of 331.42, and that is still x squared. How am I going to solve for just x? Well, I have to take the square root of that number. Luckily for me, i got a calculator which will do it for me. So this x, that side length, is about 18.20 meters. Now, as a check, I just make sure that the answer I got is no larger than the sum of these two. The farthest apart that 8 and 12 meters in either direction could ever possibly get is 20 meters, 12 this way and 8 this way. But that wouldn't even be a triangle, that would just be a flat line. As long as the answer I get is less than 20, then I 
the answer at least makes sense. And it does. This is 18 meters. Now that's how you're going to use cosine law to solve for a side length. Remember, you can also use cosine law if you're given all three sides. That's the example that I've rigged for you here. We have 10 and 12 and 15. The formula your teacher might give you is cos of angle C equals a squared plus b squared minus c squared all over 2ab. That's a rearranged version of this, where you move those to the other side and subtract them. Then you divide by negative 2ab, and you do some work to cancel the negatives. Anyways, if I'm asked for angle r, then I have to replace my c with r, replace that c with r, and put my other two letters where the a and b go, just like we did before, but now it's different letters. You're just going to have to get used to the fact that you can use different letters here. Side length little s is 12, so s squared is 12 squared. Side length little t is 10. So I'm going to put 10 squared there. Side length little r is 15. So this is minus 15 squared. And here I have 2 times little s times little t. Now what I want you to do here is to do the entire top on your calculator and the entire bottom and then divide. So I've got 12 squared plus 10 squared minus 15 squared. Oh, that gives me actually just 19. <laughs> and on bottom, I've got 2 times 12 times 10. That's 240. So the cosine of angle R is that. Now, that's not the size of the angle. That's clearly just a fraction. I have to undo cos as well. The way I'm going to do that is to move it to the other side and write cos to the power of negative 1. It's actually inverse cos but you'll see it on your calculator as cos to the negative one. Some people call it arc cos or, or yeah, inverse cos, that's it. And I'm just going to send that 19 over 240 into it. I got shift cos, cos to the negative one, of 19 over 240. Now I could have gotten the decimal for that and typed the decimal instead, but I figure it's just as easy to put the dividing in there. And so the answer I end up with is about 85.46 degrees. Cool. Now that's actually a pretty big number. It's not quite 90. And you know what? That kind of looks like not quite 90 as well. So that answer makes sense to me. The other thing I'll point out is that bigger sides are often across from bigger angles. And if this is almost 90 degrees, neither of these can be 90 degrees because they can only ever add up to 180 because all the angles in a triangle add to 180. So for my biggest angle to be a little less than 90 makes perfect sense to me. Cool. Cosine law is what you use when you have either two sides and the angle in between them or all three sides of a triangle. I've said use it when you don't have a 90 degree angle but the secret is you actually can use it when you have a 90 degree angle. We just don't recommend it because it feels like a lot more work than regular sine cos tan or the Pythagorean theorem. Thanks for being with me and best of luck.